So far we've seen two algorithms that allow us to solve the mth to last element problem uh, and we said that uh, the first algorithm involved two traversals. The first one was about finding where the last element was located by figuring out the number of elements in the linked list and then based on that information that we gleaned from the first traversal we could go on with a next traversal and figure out where our mth to last element is located. And we said this might be pro problematic for long lists that may be stored on disk. Then we talked about a second algorithm which essentially um, involved hopping, so looking at every single element in the list, so it would be only one traversal, but for every single element of the list you would perform m hops forward and try to find out if that element that you arrive at is the final element of the list. And uh, we said that this one was really not time efficient as it involved for every element of the list, that is there we have n elements, it involved m jumps. So in the worst case scenario we have a big O of mn. Now the third algorithm we're going to look at right now is one involving, a, it's still one traversal, so we want to stay away from two traversals that we looked at right here. Uh, uh, but this one right here is tries to, it attempts to solve the time complexity that we've introduced here by essentially uh, having a moving window across the linked list that we're sweeping over. So we would, for example, if m is equal to 3, we would keep this moving window and we would create a data structure that reflects the size of this moving window. So suppose we would use an array and I would store um, a, a uh, pointers to the three elements that come before uh, the one I am looking at. So for example, if I have my current pointer and I'm sweeping over the list for my first traversal and only traversal, so I would look at this one and then enqueue it in my data structure, the temporary data structure that I created here that is of size m, and then it would go right here. Then I, I would look at this element and then also enqueue it right here, and then look at that element, enqueue it once more, and then we keep on doing this, always enqueuing here and dequeuing from here. So we would always keep track of this, this element basically would be the one that is m step away from the current position that we're looking at. So this moving frame would essentially be moving across this linked list and the element that it stores in its first position here would be the one that is m steps away from the, uh, the current position that we're looking at, which in this case would be right here. So we would do that and uh, when we reach the end all we have to do is just look at this data structure, access the first element, and this is the pointer that we need to return. Now the only problem with this uh, algorithm is that there is this extra storage requirement. We have to store uh, m pointers. Now if m is really large, if we're talking about m for example a thousand, then we have uh, introduced this new data structure that is a thousand times, uh, that has a thousand pointers, has space for a thousand pointers, and that's really not efficient. So Let's move on to the final algorithm, which will be the one that we're going to be implementing. And that's the one that essentially uses something very similar to that, but instead of using a, a data structure that stores m elements, we're going to store only one pointer. So we're going to create one temporary pointer, and that will, pointer will point at the element which is m steps away from where the current pointer is looking at. So if this was our linked list, then essentially if our current pointer is here and our m is equal to 2 for example 0, 1, 2 then our m behind, let's call it m behind pointer so this is the current pointer that we use to sweep into, over the entire list and this is m behind this m behind pointer that we create points at the element that is m points behind the current pointer and so all you have to do is just keep track of this and update it accordingly as you sweep over the list so lock it with the current pointer so they would advance in step together and when you reach the final element then you know that m behind is pointing at the correct element that you want to look at and this is the one that we're going to be um, implementing and uh, there are a few error conditions that we have to handle what if the element what if the list is less than m uh, uh, elements and we're going to handle that in the code and we're going to see how we're going to do this and uh, finally uh, we might have we might introduce some off by one errors because we're talking about you know m is equal to zero m is equal to, to one and two we might be off by one or two so we're going to perform one example just to make sure that we've nailed it we know exactly what we're doing and then this is essentially the algorithm we're going to be implementing